Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Nikki Manby, and I am the head of emerging products and innovation for AP Samia at Visa, which is Asia Pacific, Central Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And it is a real pleasure to be here today in Indonesia, but it is a particular pleasure to be here among so many students. I think about 75% of the audience today are students, and I spend a lot of time talking with bankers, so trust me, this is a real treat. I also think that you students might have a chance at reading this very small print. Every presentation that I give for, on Visa's behalf starts with a statement about forward-looking statements and the fact that I'm not making predictions. So it's very appropriate for today to start with this, uh, but I'd like to follow quickly with a video to give you a little bit of how we think about the vision for the future of commerce. Networks, internet, mobile, and electronic payments. She can link to experiences and offers tailored to her exact preferences and location. And with one device, pay, ride the subway, share information with friends, do pretty much anything. By connecting the power of the internet, mobile, and electronic payments, merchants can grow their business by linking operations to offers and turning excess inventory into sales. When we do that, we transform big data into intelligent information that helps businesses, large or small, grow. We can enable better choices and give people more convenience, control, and freedom. And when networks connect, we can start addressing big challenges like financial exclusion. So a fisherman in Uganda no longer gets paid in cash that can be lost or stolen. He can store and access his money on a mobile phone. He can transfer funds to pay school fees and utility bills with a push of a button. But what if he needs to reach beyond his local network? By connecting closed-loop mobile money systems to a secure, open payment network like Visa, he can now send and receive funds from anyone, anywhere. He can accept payment from more people. He can grow his business and build a better future for his family and his community by connecting to the world. At the end of the day, people, whether they're in New York or Uganda, Moscow or Rio, want networks that work for them. If we can do that, we can transform commerce. We can make people's lives better. We can network economies for growth and, in doing so, Network the world. So the first component of technology trend that I'd like to talk a little bit about is mobile. We're up to 6 billion mobile subscribers in the world. An amazing statistic. Analysts suggest that we're up upwards of 85% of the world's population has a mobile phone. 70% of those mobile phone subscribers are in emerging markets starts to have us talk differently about what we even mean when we say emerging if most mobile phone subscribers are actually in emerging markets. It is truly the first universal technology, but it's more than just having handsets in people's hands. It is about the connectivity that comes from this distribution of handsets. The fact that our mobile ecosystem is inherently networked as the video references, we have the ability to make connections that have never been able to be made before. Second technology trend that we think about as we're thinking about the future of commerce is cloud computing. Now, it's a little bit of a fancy term, but it's actually quite simple. It means the use of a network to deliver a product and service. Um, today, all of us who are iTunes users are using the technology that is cloud computing, the efficiency of having your music stored in the cloud as opposed to copies on all three of those mobile devices that you own. This is the power of cloud computing, and if you translate that to a retail environment, you can quickly imagine how the cloud computing technology will enable change in a retail environment. So this means much lower cost of entry, and it means that we can get to market much more quickly with the services and products 
that companies around the world are hoping to deliver to consumers. The last element of technology that we talk about as we're thinking about the future of commerce is big data. Now, this is probably my favorite term. It's very surprising to see information technology come up with a label that is so clear. Big data means just that. It's high volume, high velocity, and high variability of data. We talked a little earlier today about the number of sensors that exist in the world today. And all three of those mobile phones that you have are in fact driving an enormous amount of data into the networks. And that information drives an amazing opportunity for companies around the world to enhance and in fact customize the services and products that they deliver to each of us. That customization and the store of information that results from all of the inputs around the world delivers what we call an opportunity for predictive commerce. This takes customization to a brand new level, to be able to be ahead of where you may even not know you'll be, to make sure that you are provided with the most relevant opportunities uh, and I think the example of the father who didn't know his daughter was pregnant uh, as soon as Target did is a perfect example of this kind of predictive commerce that the richness of data is providing us. So that's a little bit about the trends. Let's talk quickly about the consumers of tomorrow. Omnichannel, they want to be able to access their commerce from any device they have. On demand, they want to be able to do it whenever and wherever they are. It needs to be open. You want to have a choice of any payment method regardless of where you're trying to pay. Rewards need to be relevant. There are lots of offers out there, lots of places to get coupons, get information about purchases that might be relevant to you. It needs to be very customized in order for you as a consumer to cut through all the vast information that big data and technology is allowing you to access. With all of those new services, we still need to be simple. It needs to be frictionless. Commerce in the future will need to continue to be as easy as possible. Uh, and products and services that don't deliver on the promise of being simple and easy for consumers won't get traction. And last but not least is secure. The future of commerce has a a responsibility to be as secure as the electronic payments of the world today. And with all of the richness of information, the increase in the number of connection points that individuals are making, the burden of securing those systems increases. So we need to remember that the future of commerce will still need to rely on improvements and continued enhancement and investment in technology to ensure that commerce is as safe in the future as it has been in the past. I'll spend just a couple of minutes into my question session talking about financial inclusion because much of what I've described today and what you saw in the video was about a very sophisticated consumer and we heard a question earlier today about consumers who are in the 50 percent as the World Bank estimates, the 50% of the world who don't have access to financial services. I am sure that no one in this room thinks that that's okay. I, I believe that we have an obligation. There are over 200 mobile uh, money programs in the world today, and we consider these programs to be closed. Now, what that means is they're available only to the consumers that share a network provider. We know in order for the future of commerce to, to grow at the speed with which the technology is growing, that these networks start need to start to connect with one another. They need to move from being closed to being connected. So think, think about the handset that you use today. If you could only talk to other consumers who were InfoSAC consumers, that, that wouldn't be very useful. Uh, you want to be able to, to talk with an Excel consumer. And the same is true for mobile money networks. You need to be able to access across the entire population of 
consumers, your friends and family and coworkers that you would like to exchange value with. So the definition of commerce is changing and we need to have a very holistic approach to ensure continued engagement with these networks around the world and Visa is working very hard to help connect them in the way that I've described. But it will take government partnership, it will take appropriate regulation, it will take a focus on financial literacy and education to be able to drive the kind of results that we'd like to see so that the future of commerce is not just anywhere, uh, anytime, but it's also truly for anyone. So thank you very much. I think I maybe have time just for one question since I spent a little bit more talking about financial inclusion today. Yes. Thank you. I'm afraid that we only can help just one question from this. Uh, my name is Muhammad Mahathir from STT PLN Jakarta. Uh, okay, because I'm a student, I want to ask you, do you have a special program for student? Uh, if yes, maybe you can tell us, because usually for a student, uh, a problem about finance is so sensitive. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, if you mean Visa as an employer, absolutely. I consider all of you in the room to be candidates. Uh, and as many of the speakers have described today, that the future of commerce relies on those who are informed. And so I, I would I I'll just ask you, I know that Indonesia is one of the primary uh, drivers of the Twitter network. How many people here today have tweeted about the presentation or their, their information today? Yeah? That's, that's what it's all about. It is using the power of networks um, to get your message out. And at, in terms of um, the visa community, we certainly hope to embrace all who are interested in that, whether it be as, as a consumer um, or as an employee. So, thank you. Hi,